Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Intel intros, Aero ready to fly drone. AirMap secures $26 million to boost drone airspace management. And Leonardo to air the development of unmanned helicopters. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, the world's largest nonprofit organization devoted exclusively to advancing the unmanned systems and robotics community, serving more than 7,500 members from industry, government organizations, and academia. After Intel made a huge splash at the Super Bowl by providing a drone-delivered light show, albeit pre-recorded, above Lady Gaga, Intel is adding a second act by introducing a ready-to-fly drone development vehicle it is calling Intel Aero. The latest Intel debut is a ready-to-fly unmanned aerial vehicle development platform that is a fully assembled, fully functional quadcopter powered by an Intel Aero compute board equipped with Intel RealSense depth and vision capabilities and running an open source Linux operating system. Geared primarily for developers and researchers who want a fast path to getting applications airborne, the Intel Aero combines the Aero Compute Board and the Aero Vision Accessory Kit with the Aero Flight Controller, GPS, Compass, Airframe, ESCs, Motor, Transmitter, and Receiver. The only thing needed to start flying is a charged battery. The Intel Aero Ready to Fly Drone is a platform for developers and is intended to be modified by developers according to their professional judgment. Intel has not established operating limitations for this drone development platform or tested any configurations other than the base configurations they are shipping. Developers are responsible for testing and ensuring the safety of their own configurations and establishing those operating limits to those configurations. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. While the consumer drone market is dominated by a few major players, notably DJI, Parrot is looking to the commercial drone industry to return the company to profitability by 2018. Parrot CFO Giles Labossiere explained that commercial drones should have a gross profit margin of at least 50 to 60 percent, where consumer drones can have a margin of a little more than 35 percent. The Navy Center for Applied Research in Artificial Intelligence has joined forces with Naval Air Systems Command and the Air Force Research Laboratory to continue work on the Tactical Battle Manager, a software system using intelligent agents to guide UAVs to serve as a wingman in simulated beyond visual range air combat missions. Former NTSB board member and current Forbes columnist John Golia has editorialized that the FAA should stop the practice of collecting reports of drone sightings altogether. His reasoning is simple and hard to counter. Golia explains that previous reporting has revealed no evidence that drones are causing any real threat to manned aviation. The FAA is working hard to keep pace with the explosive developments in the drone industry when it comes to the regulatory environment, according to the assessment of Adam Lisberg, head U.S. spokesman for DJI. He spoke to Aero News at the Consumer Electronics Show. The entire interview may be viewed on Airborne Unmanned's YouTube playlist by searching Aero TV, Drones Are Good for America. That was today's Unmanned Minute. Now back to the news. AirMap, the developer of an airspace drone management platform, has announced a $26 million Series B funding round led by Microsoft Ventures with additional participation from Airbus Ventures, Qualcomm Ventures, Sony, Unique, and others. The latest funding brings AirMap's airspace management platform and unmanned aircraft traffic management solutions to new markets worldwide as AirMap opens offices in Berlin, Germany and at the NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California. AirMap CEO Ben Marcus noted that, quote, very soon millions of drones will fly billions of flights. This is a future that depends on safe, autonomous drone operations at scale. AirMap's technology will make this future possible, allowing the drones of today and the autonomous drones of tomorrow to take flight. 
Millions of drones and hundreds of drone manufacturers and developers rely on the platform to assess and share the data that they need to fly safely in low-altitude airspace. AirMap's data and services are embedded into drones, ground control stations, and flight apps by top drone makers. More than 125 airports use AirMap's airspace management dashboard to open surrounding airspace to drones, view past and current drone flights, accept digital flight notices, and communicate with drone operators. AirMap also provides geofencing, remote identification of drones, and sophisticated in-flight deconfliction. Aerospace giant Leonardo has been awarded a contract from the UK's Ministry of Defense to research and develop a rotary wing UAS capability concept demonstrator. The MOD's Defense Equipment and Support Technology Office pledged the two-year jointly funded research and development contract for the UAS with the global high-tech company headquartered in Italy. Mario Moretti, CEO and general manager at Leonardo, said, quote, This is an exciting time as the opportunities presented by unmanned technologies start to be realized in the vertical takeoff and landing sector. These technologies and systems can be a game changer in terms of undertaking a wide range of autonomous operations at a significantly lower cost. Between the partnership between these two entities, they hope to offer the national military better rotary wing aircraft by utilizing emerging technologies, reducing cost, and increasing the persistence, resistance, agility, and flexibility of future aircrafts, which is especially important for future challenging operating environments. The program builds off the findings of rotary wing UAS capability concept demonstrator phase one program, which took place between 2013 and 2015, and will also look to draw lessons from demonstrations held at the Royal Navy's unmanned warrior demonstrations in 2016. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at avsi.org or airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week. <laughs>